everyone, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to do the various climate calculations for your geography class. We're going to start off with temperature range. And with temperature range, we're looking at the difference between our highest temperature and our lowest temperature. So in order to do this, you're going to look for the month that, that has the highest temperature and the month that has the lowest temperature. So in our climate information that we have here, we will see that uh, July and August have our highest and January has our lowest. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 15 degrees Celsius, which was our July or August temperature, and and we're going to subtract from it our negative 15, which is our lowest temperature. Now we know that two negatives make a positive. So in fact, what we will be doing is adding 15 plus 15 here. Um, but just be mindful, we are looking for the difference. Now the difference here is 30 degrees Celsius. And we want to make sure that we do have our units of measurement that is added with this as well. So for our temperature range for this location, it is 30 degrees Celsius. For our annual average temperature, what we're going to do is we are going to add up all of our average temperatures for every single month, and we're going to divide by 12, which is the total number of months. So you're going to take your negative 15 plus your negative 5 plus your negative 1 and on and on and on to get your, your total. <laughs> So our total in this case is going to be 38. Now we're going to take that 38 and we're going to divide by 12, which of course, again, is your total number of months. And that's going to give us 3.16. And we're going to round to one decimal place. So it's going to be 3.2. And that's, of course, going to be degrees Celsius. So our annual average temperature is 3.2 degrees Celsius. For total precipitation, what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of our precip precipitations from January to December, and we will get a total. So we're going to take 31 plus 17 plus 16 and on to get our total. Once we have all of our calculations in, we would then add them up. And of course, our total is going to be 394. And in this case, our unit of measurement is millimeters. So 394. 94 millimeters is our total precipitation for this location. For snowfall equivalent, what we're looking for is the months where there is a temperature at or below zero degrees Celsius. So let's first figure out which months those are. So the months that have a temperature of zero or lower are January, February, March, November, and December. Now, what we're going to be looking for is not our temperature. We're actually going to be paying attention to our uh, precipitation totals. So here are our precipitation totals. And I always say to students to highlight them or circle them so that it can be a little bit more visual um, and oh, you can be more aware of what you are adding. And so uh, in this case, we're going to be adding up 31 plus 17 plus 16 plus 28 plus 27. And that's going to give us a total of 119. Now, because snowfall is more dense, we need to multiply it by 10 to get a more accurate representation. So 119 multiplied by 10 gives us a total of 1,190. And then millimeters is again our unit of measurement. For our length of growing season, what we're looking at is the months where there is an average temperature of six degrees Celsius or or more. So the reason why we, we pick six degrees is because this is where the ground is more readily able to um, grow plant matter and uh, have more success with with the with its growth. So let's have a look at which months um, we will be looking at. So it's going to be May, uh, June, July, August, September. Those are our three months where we have a temperature of of six degrees Celsius or more. Now, each of those months, you want to look at how many days are in that month. So for our May, there's 31, June, there's 30, July 31, August 31, and September 30. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding these up to get the length of our growing season. So the length of our growing season for this location is 153 and the unit of measurement is days. For seasonal distribution of precipitation, what we're looking at is the amount of precipitation that takes place in our winter months versus our summer months. Now, for us, our winter months are going to be January to March and October to December. 
for our summer months, we are looking at April to September. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding up our precipitation totals for each of those uh, sections of the year. So when we're looking at winter and finding out our seasonal distribution of precipitation for winter, we are going to be adding, so I'll put winter here, um, we are going to be adding 31 plus 17 plus 16 plus 31 plus 28 plus 27, which is going to give us a total of 150 millimeters. And for summer, we are going to be adding 21 plus 29 plus 50 plus 56 plus 51 plus 37 which is going to give us a total of 244 millimeters. Now you're gonna to wanna to look to see which of these two totals is the higher. Um, so as you can see, our higher one is the summer. So therefore the seasonal distribution of precipitation takes place in the summer months. Now we want to figure out, is this location a location that is in an area of continental climate? or is it in a location that is a maritime climate? So remember, maritime climates tend to be near larger bodies of water. So think like the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean. These are large bodies of water. And so as a result, the climate conditions are going to be different than a location that is further away from a body of water. So we don't know where, you know, where this location is. So what I've done is I put over all of our answers. I put them all here onto the, onto the screen for you. And now we're going to have a look and see which one lines up more accurately. So if we have a look, I've highlighted off here our temperature range, our total precipitation, and our seasonal distribution. These three in particular are going to tell us whether it's a continental or a maritime climate. So if it's continental, the temperature range is more than 25 degrees. If it's maritime, it would be less than 25 degrees. So for our location, it's more. So it's going to fall over here. For total precipitation, it has to be less than 1,000 millimeters if it's going to be continental. If it's maritime, the total precipitation will be more than 1,000 millimeters. So for us, our precipitation is less than 1,000, so it falls into continental climate. For our seasonal distribution, for continental, it would be summer. For maritime, it would be winter. So in maritime locations, they tend to have more um, precipitation in their winter months. Now, for our location here, this one favored more for the summer. So as you can see, we have three out of three denoting that this is a continental climate. Now, if you do run into a situation where your temperature range is like spot on to 25 degrees Celsius, then you would just go with your two out of three. So if the other two line up with continental, then go for with continental. Or if the other two line up with maritime, then you would go with maritime. So if you do find that it's spot on, then just look to your other two to, to get your answer. If you're looking for extra practice on the screen, you will see another location. So go ahead and see if you can calculate the temperature range, the annual average temperature, total precipitation, the snowfall equivalent, the length of growing season, and the seasonal distribution of precipitation and see if you can get it correct. And here are the answers. Did you get them correct? If not, go back in the video and have a look and see how you calculated your answers and what ways you can improve for the next time. Good luck.